the internet is quite pissed by this. This anime was shot, scripted, and AI generated by Corridor Digital. You know those guys. They did real life Minecraft, Dark Souls, Halo, Mario. They even showed a real life woman at some point. Corridor got their hands on Stable Diffusion. It's this AI that, I don't know, does AI sh but it was sloppy. So they clashed heads, did research, and two months later we got an eight minute long short film produced by people who never had to pick up a pen. Imagine RDC getting their hands on this, the kids that will run around doing crazy sketches. Never before has animation been more accessible to the average person, and never before has that extremely specific demographic of white dudes that are extremely active on Twitter with thick ribbed glasses and beards been more angry. And that made me so mad on so many levels. Here's the thing. On one hand, I think AI is terrifying and I want it to go away. On the other, I know that it won't go away and that screaming at excited nerds will do absolutely nothing. I'm not an AI technician, nor am I extremely smart, but God put me on this earth to talk about things I know nothing about. I would like to discuss why people are angry, who's angry, and share my perspective on this whole ordeal. And to do that, we're gonna have to watch a video made by Mother- Mother's Basement hates this shit. I am insulted, and so should you. Jeff is an anime YouTuber that has been on the platform long before I have. He's part of a small group of creators who pioneered this niche to where it is today. In his video, Jeff makes some very valid points about the grim future that could lie ahead of AI, and zero good points uh, about what Corridor has to do with that. Like, this dude for real said this video? It's not- Jeff will not call this video art. In fact, he doesn't consider anything AI generated to be art. And I actually agree with that last part. Art is an expression of human creativity. As soon as a machine does the walking, you're already lost. Millions of photos, regardless of copyright or if the author likes it, are used to train these AI. They teach it to guess which colors and shapes go where on a grainy image. Not only is this overpowered as fuck, but it by itself is devoid of creativity, which is derived from our personal experiences and biases. Jeff, I'm with you 100% when you say this, but you have to s stop yourself from, from fucking talking if you're gonna be all I know some dipshit jumped down to the comments to say, uh, the only difference between an AI reproducing an art style and a human artist doing it is the time it takes. Now, wait a minute, hold on. I just don't think this is a very dipshit coded comment. What you said is not funny enough to be that rude. If you're gonna be a dick, hide it with as much humor as possible, like what I'm doing. There's a part of this video where he's like, If they were interested in making something with even a shred of artistic legitimacy, they could have hired an artist or two to draw up the model sheets their AI would use, but instead they just went and stole a bunch of frames from Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust and um, trained their computer. Someone better tell this motherfucker we're any tubers. Our job is to steal frames. We just take clips of anime and talk over them. But Jeff, you and I are artists. We transform the work we talk about. We reshape it with aid of our personal experiences. I don't think you can be on the side of anime abridged and critique and AMVs, but flip as soon as someone uses software that digitally collages that same content. To say that Corridor made something without a shred of artistic legitimacy is disingenuous. This team had a vision they wanted to achieve, so Corridor problem solved. They combined the discoveries of multiple users to get this AI looking the way they wanted. And even then, they had to tune the shit out of it. Write a short film, voice act, normal act, buy costumes, teach the AI what they look like, turn those photos into anime images, pop up an Unreal Engine to set up a bajillion cameras with different angles so they could superimpose their animated bodies onto a new environment, and even then, they had to add so many things in post. Storytelling, acting, editing, videography. If you don't think a convergence of all these skills is art, then I don't value your opinion on this topic. And then there's those sassy fingers. I don't like those sassy fingers. MB, how come every time you call this video an anime, you gotta use air quotes? Because their anime looks like ass. You made a video called Avatar is an anime. Avatar is an anime. Fuck you, fight me. You of all people, should not be doing the sassy fingers. In that video, he made the point that anime is a movement, an, an artistic, artistic movement within, within the, the medium, medium of, animation, of animation, not unlike postmodernism or the French New Wave in film. 
everything that makes anime, anime. The big-eyed aesthetic, the over-the-top action, the mature themes, the overt sexuality is a part of that movement. The line between anime and not anime is gray. It doesn't even have to be hand-drawn or made in Japan anymore. So if it looks like anime, sounds like anime, and is written like an anime, What's stopping it from being an anime? There's this video of Aaron Blaze, a dude who animates for Disney, reacting to corridors behind the scenes. Numerous times he stops the video and points out, yo, that's just like how we made Snow White. It's not too different than what we did on Beauty and the Beast. We shot reference a lot. AI doesn't write the script, make a story, and rotoscope itself. This is an art form. An art form that is very distinct from all other animation we've seen, if you want to call it animation. It's constantly rotoscope. It has some jank. F***ed up hands and... Mm. Yeah, it's got the hands. Garbled monster, and the monster faces, mouth. and not to mention their six-fingered thumbnail. Okay, I get it! I don't think this will replace animators in the same way that CGI didn't replace animators. But who knows? Tech. Recently, I visited ChatGPT for the first time, uh, and within 15 minutes, it had quoted Biggie Smalls saying, I'm slamming n****s like a dungeon dragon, coming around the corner with the gangster lean. Biggie Smalls has never said that. So then I asked it to write the description of a pickle, but as a Dark Souls 3 item. A briny relic of a bygone era. This pickle has withstood the test of time. Once used as a means of preserving food, it now serves as a reminder of the fleeting nature of life. Consume it to restore a small amount of health, but beware the potential side effects of consuming a food item of unknown age and origin. Yeah. In about five years, these things are replacing me. When I talk about AI, I don't want anyone to be under the impression that I don't sympathize with everyone whose jobs are in jeopardy. I'm scared as hell, but this situation constantly reminds me of the people that freaked out over the Industrial Revolution. In 19th century Britain, weavers and textile workers were way more important. It could take years to cultivate the skills necessary to weave with the best of them, and it could take several hours to produce very little cloth using a loom. Then, some guys like, hey, why pay people when machine work free? The world agreed. Automated loom factories started popping up around the 1800s. They continued to get more and more badass, and instead of using a single skilled worker on one machine, suddenly one guy could oversee a bunch at once. Now, every once in a while the machines would eat a woman or a small child, but that didn't stop anyone from using them. This is also how our politicians work. But think back to those weavers, the people who worked for years doing this stuff by hand. They were sort of phased into obsolescence. Would they just take that? No. A group that would be known as the Luddites began burning down factories and destroying knitting frames in protest. This movement was quickly adopted all across England, until finally the government heard the voices of the people, saw the pain they were in, and chopped their f***ing heads off. It just says executed here, so that's an artistic change by me. I was really proud to find this in the newspaper clipping. By 1813, the Luddites had faded into history. That's pretty messed up, right? On the flip side, look at how painters first responded to photography. Paul Della something was this hugely influential artist in the 19th century. He has this hard ass quote after he was allegedly shown a photograph that goes, from today, painting is dead. We know that photography didn't kill art. There were even artists at the time who were excited by the idea. We can use the strengths of both mediums to improve painting rather than replace it. But the feeling that technology will one day automate your job and push your skills into obsolescence existed nonetheless. We've seen it happen. It's very hard to tell who's going to be the weavers and who's going to be the painters in this situation. Only the future knows for sure. I agree with Mother's Basement on a lot of fronts. A really good point he makes is that currently this AI stuff can't be copyrighted. You can even take a frame from the Corridor video and sell merch with it. As long as the AI is trained on material you don't own, it's not yours. But what if a big studio hires technicians and artists to train AI with material they own? That gives studios a massive advantage over the little guys who can't afford that. And if it gets good enough, workers could even be phased out if they go on strike because guess what? We can make up your workload until you accept a lower wage. There are so many ways AI can benefit humanity. Conversely, an equal amount of ways it can tear us apart. Jeff, what the fuck does this have to do with Corridor Digital? It seems like the internet has some mis- This is a very emotive topic, so I can understand why people might get angry with Corridor at first glance. Did we just change animation forever? Uh, I Fucking sure hope, hope not. not. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. But Jeff is tripping. When hearing anything Corridor says, he takes the most sinister, non-charitable interpretation every time. Exhibit A. 
When I first watched the video, Jeff had me thinking, oh, Corridor made a paid subscription service for an AI and is charging people for tutorials on how to use it. That's kind of messed up if they're using copyrighted material. Which is what will happen if the technology and processes Corridor are advertising and apparently tutorializing behind a paywall on their website do take off. This is bullshit. First off, Corridor is using three open source software to achieve this effect. They don't get money if you use the shit. Jeff never mentions that, so the technology and processes Corridor's advertising statement had me confused. What Corridor did was push a new technique using this software. They got the animations to flicker less and got the AI to stop changing styles constantly. Then they recorded an hour long tutorial that teaches you how to replicate that same effect. One thing I want to talk about is the democratization of, of this process. This is a situation here where we're looking at a piece of software that's free, that anyone has access to. A process here that we're sharing openly with everyone because everyone's openly shared knowledge with us, with everyone. But how is it democratizing animation if the tutorial's behind a paywall? Well, I went and made an account. Oh my fucking God, it's fucking free. This long ass tutorial is free. If you're only after their technique, you can plug in your card number, get 15 days of free usage on their website, and bail once you have the hour long tutorial. It's not really an ad for that, more so the exclusive content on their site if you decide to stay. What Mother's Basement said wasn't lying per se, but that's pretty fucking scummy and dishonest in my opinion. Dishonest is the perfect word. Exhibit B. Mother's Basement is being dishonest when he says, they're clearly pitching this as a disruption to animation, not VFX, so... Not VFX, so... You also say they're advertising, advertising how to cut animators out of animation. Let me just say, dog, that is your pitch. <laughs> Their pitch is literally at the start of your video. Wouldn't it be cool if you could film yourself and easily turn into anything you want, like a cartoon character? Over and over and over, Corridor drives home the idea of giving the little guys, the creatives, groups like Corridor the ability to make animated stuff. Regardless of what you speculate will happen in the future, this is what they're advertising. This is the pitch. And people can experiment and improve upon the process, helping all of us get better. That's great. I love that idea. Sharing the knowledge. That's that's. That's what it's all about. How can you on one hand claim they're trying to cut animators out of animation and on the other clown them for trying to make it more accessible for them wanting to democratize animation? See, he's doing the fingers again. You can't have both. Also, Jeff hates black babies. Maybe even Chinese ones too. That's what I took away from the video. That was a joke, Jeff loves all babies. But do you see how I can infer something, construct a straw man and make that the thing people attack? Sure, you feel they're advertising how to replace animators and disrupt the world of animation, but what about their words and actions leads you to think that's their intent? Otherwise, you're just kind of Exhibit C minus. From the one and a half million views in three days and tens of thousands of likes on that video, we can also see that the tech is already good enough to satisfy a sizable group of people with little to no taste. Weird statement, right? If you clicked like on this video, you have little to no taste. It's not like, I don't know, AI is fucking cool and people just want to see it. I got a lot going on, okay? I don't need an anime YouTuber, the pinnacle of human performance, telling me I have no taste because I think a video is interesting. Continuing on that track, Jeff goes on to say, And knowing what the broader anime fandom is willing to accept in terms of visual quality from the likes of One Punch Man Season 2 and Tokyo Revengers, it's entirely possible that studio will get away with it and... Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Wasn't this guy bought and paid for by Record of Ragnarok? No offense, but... Who gives a fuck what you think about people's taste? You endorsed an anime that isn't animated! In case you're not aware, Record of Ragnarok is an anime that was received terribly by fans for how poorly animated it was. One of the fights is a straight up slideshow. Jeff was paid to do a reaction video to promote the anime. <laughs> Friggin' orbital laser level attacks. I love it. Whoa, mid! I, I love no mid! Mid, yes! Whoa! Mid! Jeff, in retrospect, realized the taste thing was a very stupid thing to say and had to issue a retraction in the comments. My point is, if you're going to get so emotional over a topic that you're lashing out at people who don't deserve it, maybe it's time to take a step back. Jeff is mad. So 
mad. Like a lot of people out there. And emotional investment is a great way to construct bad arguments to support your feelings. MB throws very valid speculations about what a future with this technology could look like. But when it comes to what the hell Corridor Digital has to do with it all, you see dishonest arguments, straw man, and this clip that he for some reason thought was a gotcha. Yeah. So when it comes to like these AI tools, it actually it makes it easier to like copy people's style. So if somebody just rips off somebody's style, call them out and it'd be like, you rip that person off, screw you. Like, so then we went and we took a bunch of frames from Vampire Hunter. Of course. Am I the only one who had to rewatch that to see what point he was making? Nico says, let people know whose style you're using. And the next clip is, Nico saying which fucking style he's using for the AI. Doesn't this seem perfectly consistent with what he just said? But shift your perception of things and it's like, aha, caught red handed. Somehow. I don't think people are wrong to be scared or upset at someone, but I think the internet has a fat case of misplaced aggression. Some dudes tweaking software to make AI mildly more presentable aren't what we should be directing our attention at. I think exploring how we can work alongside and legislate this stuff is. I want a future where art coexists with AI in the same way photography did with painting. And I am positive that right here, right now, there is some way we can take that first step. We need an active, aggressive counterculture that mm -hmm, pushes mm -hmm. back against this nonsense wherever it rears its ugly head. Ooh. AI anime needs to become Fuck. as dirty a word as NFT. Wait, wait, wait. Your solution is to make it cringe? We will stop AI from stealing our jobs by bitching about it. The sales volume of NFTs has gone up. How, how is this your solution? There's a misconception on the internet that bitching about things somehow either changes people's minds or makes the problem disappear. Let me give you an example. When Nike put out an ad endorsing Colin Kaepernick's activism, people felt the type of way. All across the US, men and women thought to themselves, as soon as I dismount this damn Jeep Wrangler, I'm gonna storm into my house and burn every goddamn Kaepernick jersey I got, damn it. Sarah, get my dip, get the chew, no. These were our intellectuals, our leaders. Many joined the cause to be just like them and burned their Nike products to send a message. Nike's sales changed dramatically and the company's value went up by six billion dollars. The movement, which aimed to be as flashy as possible, actually ended up being a phenomenal advertisement and a lot of people were just like, yep, I wish I had my Nike ship back. More recently is the Hogwarts Legacy boycott, right? Hogwarts Legacy is this game set in the Harry Potter universe. Now the author of Harry Potter, JK Rowling, had nothing to do with the production, but she does receive royalties. And JK Rowling is guilty of trans transphobia. transphobia. So she's dead in the eyes of the public. People, repulsed by her words, decide to boycott the video game as to not support her even a little bit. Fair enough, but boycotting the game, not enough. It was these people's responsibility to boycott it for you. Retarded tweets rained down upon any streamer caught showing interest in the game. A VTuber was bullied to tears for playing. Hella people were harassed and picked on by rabid activists. It didn't matter if you were famous, it didn't matter if you weren't. The internet decided that buying this game was an act of hate, and it was their job to stop it. The game just outsold fucking Elden Ring. Turns out, bitching online is a great advertisement for the thing you hate. I can't be the only one who didn't know or care about this game until the activism. Relax and take no Did the aggressive counterculture curb the sales of Hogwarts Legacy? No. It did, however, make people feel like they're part of a movement. It was a quick, free placebo for change. It's easy to get behind a movement without thinking of how you're perceived by outside groups. Because I promise, in both of these cases, people who didn't immediately agree looked at the stuff being posted and thought to themselves, okay, and kept it pushing. This is exactly what I think when I see someone post a picture of themselves having fun with AI and see those tweets that are like, this is just you stealing from artists. Please, it's lazy. Please don't do it. bad they trend. also are Get trained out. on art please, stolen from please, artists that deserve to get man. paid. Come Disappointed in you. Do you think anyone has ever read one of these types of tweets and thought, you know what? You guys are right. Hell no! I just want to see how I would look as an anime character. I'm not making merch. It's cool. 
AI is cool to play with, so people are going to play with it. Just as being a wizard is kind of cool, I'll just do it in private if you're going to yell at me. Statements like these are great for people who already agree with you, but outsiders are the ones you want, and picking odd fights like these is a terrible way to recruit outsiders. Attacking Corridor is not the way. The march of technology lies not in the hands of YouTubers, but in the audience that consumes that media and the laws that govern it. If there's a market for it, it will exist. Simple as that. There's nothing we can do to stop people from refining AI. Right now, thousands of people are tinkering away trying to find the next foothold towards making the stuff look good. Corridor's video was only possible because of the thousands before them. So the aim isn't to stigmatize innovating with AI. The cat's out the bag. The aim isn't to pray people have high enough standards to not like the stuff. I'm sorry, Jeff. The aim is to create a world that coexists with AI. What laws can we enact that will protect animators? What are some general practices that the average person can agree on. I don't have all the answers. I don't even have a good amount of answers, but here's a start. Corridor should have credited Vampire Hunter D on the main video. I don't think they made an attempt to obfuscate where they got the style. In fact, the behind the scenes video credits Vampire Hunter D for the style multiple times. It has damn near the same amount of views as the original, but a good practice to always have is saying, this AI was trained on images from X. It gives the average person a better idea of what they're looking at, and a quick disclaimer like that on the start would help promote the original works even more. Here's another one. Jeff was very, very doomer about that copyright stuff. If big studios hire people to train AI on content they own, and indie studios can't afford to do so, that's unfair. True. But since we're in the land of make-believe, let me put something out there. What if someone trains an AI on all the public domain stuff out there? I use public domain stuff for my videos all the time. This way, artists could even opt in instead of having their works taken. I have a friend who knows artists who would like to do something like that. Indie studios can then use this AI and feed it images that they created to replicate that style and boom, ethical and legal? I don't know if the law would allow you to retain copyright and I'm not going to learn. But. That's kind of how sampling public domain music works, so I figured it'd be fine. That brings us to the... I'm not an animator nor lawyer, so I don't have anything groundbreaking to bring to the table. But if you want to know my opinion, I think a lot of people are shitting themselves for no reason. The whole, I oppose this thing, so I must attack anything related to it mentality is silly. If that's how things worked, the vegans running around throwing period blood at f***ing trucks and getting run over would have the meat industry on the ropes. That's how I see Jeff saying we need an active and aggressive counterculture that opposes AI anime wherever it rears its head. He thinks he's Rosa. But like Jeff, I love animation and I respect artists. They should be getting paid more and don't deserve to have their jobs threatened. I just don't see Corridor getting in the way of either of those two things, and there are actual animators that share that feeling. Jeff deserves respect. He's an OG. If you're interested, check out his original video. I could chop and skew the stuff he's saying, you wouldn't know, but more importantly, Subscribe to me. I don't make stuff like this often. I'm gonna be honest. I probably never will again, but anime manga. Hey, uh, where, where are you going? Don't leave me out yet. Please, please subscribe. subscribe.